What would happen if you consumed just one cup, eight ounces of raw milk every day for 30 days? What would you start to notice? Well, I'll tell you what I experienced. I'll tell you what the research suggests. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Okay, the first thing that you might notice is if you have achy joints or if you feel stiff, within the first couple of days, you might actually notice an improvement in that. Now, I did. I noticed this with my low back issues. I have disc issues in my lower back, and I noticed that it wasn't really hurting me as much. I didn't really attribute it to raw milk though. I didn't think about it until I started looking at this research. There's something with raw milk known as the Wolzen factor. Now we're gonna talk about that in just a second. What you have to understand about raw milk is that raw milk is not pasteurized and exposed to ridiculously high heat. The high heat is what denatures the proteins in milk. It breaks down some of the antibody effects. It breaks down the good bacteria. It kills the bacteria. You're kind of left with just a vesicle for sugar in milk and fat. There's very little nutritional value once it's been pasteurized. So if we come to the raw milk side, there's this thing called the Wolzen factor, which is a specific compound, a fat soluble compound that gets denatured if the milk is heated to a very high temperature, like in pasteurization. It's called the Wolzen factor because it was coined by Rosalind Wolzen. Now it's also known as the anti-stiffness factor. So it's a powerful anti-inflammatory effect that seems to have particularly robust effects on osteoarthritis. So if you're someone that's dealing with like stiff joints, you may want to consider this. It could help you quick. There was an interesting paper published in Osteoarthritis Cartilage Journal that took a look at this. Now, it was in vitro, full disclaimer, which means it was in a, like a, a cultured you know, dish. But what they found is when they took chondrocytes, which are cartilage cells, and they basically caused them to become inflamed, they noticed that when they were exposed to stigmasterol, which is the Wolzen factor, it's this fat soluble nutrient, inflammation went down significantly. As a matter of fact, they noticed a reduction in inflammatory genes between 73 and 83%. So it turned down the genes that would cause inflammation in these cartilage tissues. This is fascinating stuff. And this was over the course of 48 hours. So if you are swapping out some garbage beverage and bringing in something like raw milk, even in a small amount where the carbs really wouldn't add up all that much, you might have tremendous effects. You might notice this. And this is something that you would notice relatively quick based upon the research. Now let's move into the next one. This was kind of interesting. You're probably going to notice that you handle fuel better, like perhaps you process carbohydrates better. You probably notice that maybe you have a little bit more energy. And some of this might directly come as a result of your gut microbiome changing a little bit. See, we have to remember, the gut microbiome really does play a huge role in how we feel. It has some to do with digestion, but it has more so to do with just a lot of other things that we're uncovering over the last five, 10 years. So when you cook milk, you kill the bacteria. And that includes yogurts. A lot of times they have to be fortified because the pasteurization process harms and kills so much of the positive bacteria that they have to add it back in. So it's not even like real, if you want to call it that. Especially if you look at things like kefir, you might know it as kefir, but apparently it's properly pronounced kefir. If you look at regular kefir, the recent research is showing that it actually doesn't survive the stomach all that well. But raw kefir seems to. And if you look at the data, even in rodents, when raw kefir is given, the change in the microbiome is huge. It's tremendous. Okay, now with this, you're also going to notice that after probably five days, seven days, your gut just feels better. You handle foods better. Maybe you handle those uh, vegetables you didn't have such a good time with before. But also, we don't realize the trace amounts of lactose that are in all kinds of different foods. If you were to eat Doritos, like Cool Ranch Doritos or something like that, there's going to be a whey powder in there. There's going to be lactose. And you might think, okay, it's this or that, it's giving me a stomach ache. It could very well just be you don't handle lactose, you don't think you're lactose intolerant, but these small amounts, you're not thinking of it as dairy. But what happens if you consume raw milk, it has the lactase in it, and it has the cultures that help you deal with milk. Have you ever thought, that maybe the reason we have 30 to 50 million people that are lactose intolerant is because 
we've babied ourselves and we don't actually get the proper enzymes and the proper bacteria to break down lactose in the first place. So from an evolutionary perspective, we're just walking this line towards all of us being lactose intolerant. So you notice your gut just feels better. You feel slimmer. And that's something that you can notice. It's crazy by adding something that has eight or 10 grams of sugar in it, even though it's raw milk sugar, somehow you feel leaner and you feel like your bloat is gone. It's pretty wild. If you are switching over to raw milk, it might not hurt to add a probiotic into the mix too, just to kind of help your gut microbiome restabilize. Okay, that way you're adding more of the good bacteria in so the milk can possibly do its job and it helps sort of support the balance of the new bacteria that's coming in. Also might help kind of counterbalance. So people that are switching over to raw milk at very first, you notice, wait a minute, this feels a little weird, but it quickly goes away in a couple of days. But some probiotics might help you out with that. I popped a link down below for the one I recommend. It's called Seed because it has a prebiotic and a probiotic in it. So a really cool product, but that's a 15% off discount link. It's literally the only probiotic I would recommend or that I let my family use because most of them out there are garbage and they don't put their money where their mouth is with the research like Seed does. So again, that link is down below. It's on the top line of the description underneath this video. They're a big supporter on this channel. So a big thank you to them as well for helping us create this content. So that link's down below. This next one is difficult to talk about sometimes because you have to kind of dance around how you mention it. But you might notice after about one to two weeks, probably around the 10 day mark, your immune system might start to feel better. Now you're not gonna know this unless you are face to face with some kind of pathogen, right? So if it's summertime and there's not a lot of sickness going around, you might not ever notice it, but you might notice it in the world of recovery. You might feel like, oh, maybe I, I'm recovering a little bit better. Uh, I noticed it when I actually had a cold that my kids had brought home and I drank raw milk for a couple of days and my cold symptoms were much shorter than they normally were. They usually last five, seven days of a stuffy nose and congestion. And then it just seemed to be about three or four days. So it went down quite a bit. Now, I'd imagine if this was going on longer term, it would be even more beneficial, but don't take my word for it. What's the research say? We have to remember that even though this milk is coming from cattle, there is very strong theory and some evidence that the antibodies and some of the, like, the enzymes and everything like that that can support our immune system could translate over to humans because we've cohabitated together so much and had so much coevolution, humans and cattle, that we've been consuming cattle milk for so long, if it's in its raw form, it might actually help us. So there was a study that took a look at 938 babies, okay, and over the course of the year, it monitored what kind of milk they consumed. Raw milk, pasteurized, ultra-pasteurized, all kinds of different stuff. And at the end of the year, they not only chronicled what milk they consumed and how often they were sick with rhinitis and upper respiratory infections, but they also took a look at their C-reactive protein levels. Mind-blowing stuff. The subjects that consumed raw milk got sick 30% less, less upper respiratory issues, et cetera, et cetera, and their C-reactive protein, their inflammation was lower. Now, granted, this is in infants where these antibodies are gonna be even more important, but in adults, this could play a role too. So something is happening here. We can't 100% say with absolute certainty that it's going to have an effect, but it's one of these things, like if you live in an area where raw milk is available, then it might be something worth a shot. I'm fortunate enough to be in California in this case where raw milk is considered legal, but there's not a lot of places where it is legal. But people think that the immune system is only about getting sick, right? The immune system does a lot more than that. It also helps us rebound from workouts better, all this kind of stuff. So overall, like in the short term, you could probably have an acute effect in terms of immune system with respiratory conditions and stuff like that. But perhaps as you go on, it might help you with the recovery from workouts and things like that. One of the things that you might notice after about two or three weeks, as you start to kind of recalibrate the fats in your body, you might notice more mental acuity and better mood. This is really wild. Okay, what we have to remember is when we pasteurize milk, we are killing off or really harming over 350 different essential fatty acids that are in raw milk. Raw milk has a lot of good fats and we're breaking them all down. So we're just left with the basics. And these essential fatty acids are literally essential. We need them. So if we are not getting these fats in, where are we getting them? Because most people that I know are not making a concerted effort to go get omega-3s in or get healthy fats. Most of the fats they're getting in are coming from either cruddy saturated fats that are low quality versions of it, not directly from like ghee or you know good animal fat. They're getting it from adulterated garbage or they're getting vegetable oils in. 
So you're getting low quality fats with little nutritional life to them. Whereas at least the fats in whole raw milk are going to be at least abundant, the good diverse fats we need. So if you look at the research, even just a little bit of omega-3 supplementation in people drastically changed mental acuity, cognitive function. And we're talking like a 10 to 13% improvement in anger, in depression, in anxiety, just by having the fats on hand. So even if it's a small amount of omega-3s that we're getting from whole milk in its raw form, it's probably a significant amount more than what we're normally getting otherwise. So this is something where people that haven't been getting omega-3s in suddenly start consuming raw milk and all of a sudden they're like, wow, my mood is better, I feel better, I feel more alive, I feel like I'm in a better mood and just my brain's working better. That's not an uncommon thing. Another thing that you'll notice right out the gate is that you'll notice your satiety is much better. What does that mean? You're less hungry. So almost immediately you're gonna notice, wait a minute, I feel less hungry. Why is that? Perhaps it has to do with, once again, an evolutionary thing. If we are getting a lot of essential fatty acids, if we are getting a lot of microbes, if we are getting a lot of protein, and we're getting it in one complete source, we have to theorize that perhaps this is sending a signal to our brain that we are complete and we are getting the nutrition that we need. But if we're consuming a bunch of empty calories, maybe at a very basic fundamental level, it communicates to our brain that we have enough fuel but at a much more grandiose level, at a micro level really, we're not communicating with the brain that we have the adequate nutrition that we need. So perhaps something happens there. I notice if I add even a half a glass of raw milk, my appetite is good, I'm satiated throughout the day. So this could be something that's very huge. And if you do this and you continue to let it reap its benefits where you lose weight, imagine what other benefits could cascade over the course of 30 days if you're simply eating less. Because we all know the benefits of eating less are huge. So how do you get yourself there? Maybe it's a little bit of this. And if you do not want to have straight up raw milk because you're concerned about the carbohydrate content, I understand that. But you can still go for things like raw cream where you're getting some of the microbial effect and you're getting the higher fat content there. Raw cream tastes delicious. Or you can go with raw kefir that's been unsweetened. Okay, that way you're getting lower carbohydrate content and the fermented effect that's gonna give you a concentrated effect on the gut. So if you're in a place where you can get raw milk, it's probably worth experimenting with. Now, full disclaimer, there was a study published in Journal Preventative Medicine that did take a look at raw milk versus pasteurized, and it did find there is a higher instance of pathogenic bacteria and material that's gonna be in raw milk no surprise. I mean, pasteurization is there to kill off those bacteria. So you're looking anywhere from like 20 to 40% occurrences of some of these pathogenic materials, which that sounds like, oh my gosh, I have a 40% chance of getting E. coli if I drink raw milk. No, just because there's a presence of certain things doesn't mean you're automatically going to get that situation, that issue with it. It does mean that you're getting exposed to it, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. But to make things feel a little bit better, they also found that like up to nine or 10% of even pasteurized milk still had this stuff, okay? So even if it's been pasteurized, you still run the risk of being exposed to these things. You just have more risk with raw milk. So you don't see 10% of people that consume regular milk keeling over from E. coli, right? It just means that even though 10% might have it, it's just increasing that risk a little bit more that there's going to be enough to cause a problem. But I have to say this is a full disclaimer. That's why raw milk is legal in some places and illegal in others. I'll see you tomorrow.